next guest uh, needs no introduction, but please bear with me and allow me the joy of introducing her. One of the most graceful and elegant women in Hollywood, the most elegant TV mom ever, for sure. She's also an amazingly devoted mother of two in real life, a fashion icon, and the only person in the world who can make elevator selfies look cool. <laughs> Dear friends, please welcome Mrs. Kelly Rutherford. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. We have been seeing you lately in uh, almost every front row of uh, every important uh, couture show. Um, of course, you are no stranger to fashion, but how was that experience, I mean, during those couple of years? Uh, did you enjoy it? Yeah, it's been kind of a new thing, actually. I was at, on a road trip with my daughter last summer and in a very sort of Nancy Myers movie moment, she was sort of on her phone with Snapchat or whatever with her friends, and she's like, you know, Mom, it's time that you kind of get, get on with things and get back to, to work. And I was like, okay. And like, it was like literally like out of nowhere, you know what I mean? And like she went back to her phone. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna kind of, you know, get back out there again, and, and that's how it happened. A friend of mine worked um, at Dior, and she invited me to go to a Dior show, and that's sort of how it happened, to be honest. It was not really thought out very much, but it end has ended up being so wonderful to, to experience. Yeah. I'll be honest, and I know I am speaking on behalf of every woman in this uh, beautiful space here. What we are really dying to know is, how do you do it? How do you put together all those beautiful everyday outfits? I know it looks so simple, but we all know it's not. I, I, I'm very, um, you know, the, during a few years ago, a girl came up to me and asked me to help her start this fashion platform. So. I said, okay, I'll do my best. And I just started sort of DMing a bunch of brands that I loved and artisan brands and these sort of emerging brands. And I thought, you know, you know, globally. And I thought it was so nice to shed, you know, light and attention on these artisan brands and keep that alive. We all talk about sustainable fashion and all of this, but that truly is sustainable. It just naturally is. So um, I ended up reaching out to maybe 3,000 <laughs> brands during that time. And then they would just sort of as a thank you say, can I send you something? Or, and I would say, oh my goodness, thank you so much. And then we, none of us were really doing much at the time, you know, and during lockdown and all of that. So I, when I would go walk the dogs in the morning or get my coffee, I would just sort of take a photo. And um, that's how it all started. It was just sort of wanting to, you know, bring attention to things that I, brands that I love that maybe my friends didn't know about or other people didn't know about, so. I think um, perhaps it is a gift that just a few people possess to know how to choose, how to choose clothes, accessories, colors, uh, even home decor. And uh, I wanted to know what were the influences that uh, you had from your childhood and your early, your younger years that played a role in like cultivating this uh, this gift, perhaps was it your mother that she was a model for Bill Blass? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was definitely my mother and my grandmother for sure. They, I, the, my mom still has incredible style, and so did my grandmother. Um, and part of that was just making vision boards, I think, and and putting different images together, whether it was a home or. It was really creating worlds, I think, which is also what I love about being an actress, is you get to sort of create this this world that you want to create and want to live in. And I think that's been very influential, of course, with many other fashionable women. But it's, it's I think, magazines at that time, because this was before we, we had our phones, our, our iPhones. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> no, we meant just magazines then, so. Even better times. Before okay. Pinterest. Uh, is there a, like a particular power in objects? Is it uh, like in fashion items, in an outfit? What is it about choosing an outfit? I mean, choosing what to wear? Well, I think it's individual. It's what inspires each of us to be the woman we want to be and how we want to look and how we want to 
be in the world and you know it can even be as simple as I'm having a funny day so I'm going to put on something that makes me feel like I'm on vacation or I'm you know trans it's it can be very transformative um, it, it changes the way we feel I know when as an actress you go in and you say okay what am I going to wear that's going to really make me feel like this character and sometimes you put on the wrong shoes and you're like nope this is not this doesn't feel like that character so I think it's the same in in our lives where you just put it on and it feels right or you you've seen somebody wear it and you think ah that woman I want to embody whatever that woman has going on over there you know as you, you talked about uh, roles and being an actress and uh, feeling uh, like yourself when you wear clothes, uh, is it true that uh, for the role of uh, Lily Vanderwoodsen in Gossip Girl, a role that made you um, internationally famous, and uh, of course Mel Melrose Place, but Gossip Girl was so connected to fashion. Uh, is it true that uh, those accessories and ideas were uh, yours? Uh, sometimes? Yes, I mean, Eric Damon is incredible. He brought so many things to choose from, but he was also very young at the time. So <laughs> I was like, you know, maybe a little Van Cleef and Arpel and a little of these, you know, that would just sort of land this character sort of more old school. Um, and he was so open and he just sort of really was open to all of us truly and what we, how we wanted to express. So yeah, he was, he was open to ideas. So those uh, Hermes bags were yours. <laughs> yes. This is what we wanted <laughs> yes, to hear. Yeah. Um, I would say that you actually invented quiet luxury, which is a, a buzzword we uh, all uh, hear on social media, on TikTok, uh, before the term was even invented. So do you think luxury has changed a lot nowadays? Yes, I mean, now, I mean, you, you know, when you're scrolling through Instagram or whatever, so many people have Hermes bags, so many people have all the labels and all the names, so um, it's changed a lot because, I mean, I remember working on Melrose Place and saving up my money to buy a, a Kelly bag, my first Kelly bag, and because Catherine Deneuve had one and Grace Kelly had one, and there was a tiny little store and nobody was really wearing them. They were kind of like old lady bags. <laughs> and This was like, you know, 20, 30 years ago. So, um, and now to see what's happening is incredible. You know, you see, you know, LVMH owning so many things and, and these big, huge, uh, you know, marketing machines. So it's very different. So I think now, you know, I, I really love this idea of of luxury, but also making it y your own so, so that you feel comfortable. So sometimes it's a t-shirt and jeans and a nice accessory. It's not always have to be so, you know. But the prices <laughs> are also insane nowadays. Yes, I remember yes. when I first worked uh, working for Marie Claire, it was yeah. not that insanely expensive to buy a designer bag. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, all part of the marketing uh, game. Yeah, well they've got, and, and that's what was so exciting about discovering these these emerging brands too is you know you're highlighting all these these cool new styles whether it's from Spain or Greece or Denmark or wherever it or Portugal there's so much happening, you know, and it's fun to sort of I mean, I know we're, and magazines are very aware of all the fashion globally that way, but it's, it's nice to highlight these brands too, you know? Um, almost um, equal percentage of your uh, Instagram posts, though, are not at all about fashion. You share some philosophical, inspiring, uh, motivational quotes. Is this a way of expressing yourself or um, like an urge to reach out and help other people? Yes, for sure. I mean, quotes have always really inspired me. So it was, uh, I don't know, it just, it felt right. It felt like, okay, how do I, it was all kind of new and the social media thing was new. And I thought, well, how do you make, how do you turn this into something really beautiful? And um, that was sort of, that's been my way of, of doing that, of saying, okay, there's, there's, there's beauty here, you know, and a way to connect on that level too. 
And uh, I have been listening one of your podcasts lately, uh, a podcast interview actually, and you said something really uh, nice and helpful about confidence. You said about auditions that when you when you walk in a room during an audition, and for example, and your energy is like, I know I can do this, yeah. instead of, uh, did you like me? Do you like what I do? That. It's always better. Do you think that women, we are like, have been programmed for so long to just wait to be chosen instead of go out there, go in the room and grab whatever it is that we're interested in, the position, the money, the job, you know? I, I think a lot of it has to do, it's funny because George Clooney is funny enough, the one that told me that. He said we were working on something together very kind of early on in my career and he said, you know, this, the thing is, when you go into any room, whether you're an actor or you're in business or in fashion, is that, you know, you want to have the confidence to say, I really can do this job. <laughs> you know, genuinely, like, feel that within your being because that's what people want. They want to say, okay, if I give you this job or I give you this role or whatever, I know you're capable to do it. So it's not b so personal in the sense that as an actor or you know, in, in any job, is that you really feel that you can do it, and that's half of it. Um, and I don't think it's any different for women. I think women are, are, are more capable, uh, are incredibly capable. I mean, we're, we're portals to the other side. So we, we carry, um, you know, sort of infinite uh, wisdom and, and strength in a way that doesn't have to be loud. I think our, our power sometimes is in uh, the softer side and we can get a lot done that way. So I think there's been a big push to be, to be pushy. <laughs> but sometimes, sometimes you need to do that, you know? But there's also this other side that's pretty cool too, you know? And, and I think it's just an awareness that, that we have it. You know, it's a frequency that we carry everywhere. Very nice. <laughs> During this conference today, we've had some very inspirational discussions on equal pay, on fighting stereotypes, and uh, whatever is holding us back. Do you think there is a discussion we should be doing more in order to improve our well-being as women? Yes, because nothing is holding us back. That's sort of frequency control. So what you want to do is you want to turn that into something empowering for ourselves. So I think, in a way, talking about women's empowerment keeps us disempowered in a, way, in a strange way. It's hard to explain, but it's like we need to get past that and talk as if we, are, we already possess, which we already do, uh, infinite, infinite power in a way that's not, uh, it's not the power that we see maybe uh, expressed today. Uh, it's not a masculine power. Um, it's a real knowing. I don't know how to describe it other than a real knowing. Women have a knowing that um, when we use that is, is beyond powerful. It's so, and so effective, you know, when we go in and we visualize or we, you know, use it in harmony with men. It's, it's how it's supposed to be. I mean, if you look at nature, everything is in balance and we're supposed to be in balance. So, um, and again, I find men very healing for women too. So I think women's empowerment is really us knowing, knowing already that it exists within us and we don't, there's no need to fight for it if you already have it and you possess it and you know it and you visualize and you know we use uh, our power is sort of channeled in a different way than male power you know so it's harnessing that and I, I think that's not necessarily uh, focused on enough you know what's our Jedi power you know Jedi power yeah I love that. yeah uh, may the force be with you. And you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> many women of my generation, many friends, uh, also talk about how they, you know, get rid of whatever is unnecessary as they grow older and they, they feel more free as they grow older and getting to know themselves better. Does that apply to you? 
Yeah, I think you let go of a lot of stuff that, that uh, it's like an unlearning. As you get older, you just let go of a lot of stuff that you realize is just a waste of time, I think, with all of us, you know? And, and I think we become more nurturing and more, we, we soften a bit, you know? We're like, you know what? It's gonna work out, it's gonna be fine. I'm not gonna cry over that because it's not gonna make it any better for me to do so. I remember my grandmother, something broke that she really loved and she said you know what I would cry about it if I thought it would change anything or make it better and it's such good wisdom you know I think the wisdom that you you have when you're older is you just don't want to put your energy in places where it doesn't need to be and that's that's a certain learning in itself that's so beautiful <laughs> actually and uh, I would like to close with that and just uh, um, talk about your next plans your, or your current professional plans, whether it's uh, fashion or uh, something on uh, television or film. What are your uh, current plans? Well, I have a French TV series that's super cool. You guys will really love it. It's called Escort Boys. <laughs> it's really fun. It's on Prime Video, and it's really it's sexy and fun, and, and it's got and, and funny. Um, so that's sort of a recent project, and I'm doing just collaborations with brands like this shirt brand Paulina or Themis is a, a good friend of mine, and this woman Vanessa Sposi from Paris and Corel. And I got involved in a social media app called Wiser, which yes. is, yeah, sharing. What is Wiser? What is the Wiser? Talk about it's, this it's a little bit. Uh, you know, it's about the sharing of knowledge and expertise, basically, and now we've sort of merged it into something called Koala, which is where you can have your own app, design your own app, and monetize that with your knowledge and expertise. So, so all the um, <laughs> creators out there, you, you should join Kelly's Koala. community and learn all, those, all this wisdom about style. Kelly, thank you so much for coming to Athens to join the Power Trip. It has been amazing to have you here yeah. on this beautiful oh stop of the, uh, spot at the Athenian Riviera. So, thank you. Thank you for having me and putting this. This is so incredible, all of you, all these gorgeous women. Thank you for having me, really. Thank you. <laughs>